Since its inception in 1967, Ceres has become a world leader in environmental research. Created as a bridge to bring together the interdisciplinary resources of a state university and a federal research laboratory, Ceres was NOAA's first cooperative institute. In the last 45 years, Ceres has conducted groundbreaking research into all aspects of the Earth's system, including the hydrosphere, biosphere, geosphere, atmosphere, and cryosphere. Ceres supports more than 500 scientists, nearly 180 graduate and undergraduate students, and five research centers all working to understand the planet and its processes from pole to pole. Well, when I first uh, arrived at CU, Carl Kisslinger was uh, the director of uh, series, and um, Carl and his colleagues had built a first-class program in, uh, in subjects related to uh, solid earth geophysics, uh, earthquake uh, prediction uh, and the like, uh, as well as in uh, atmospheric dynamics. Under my time as director of series, uh, we grew to seven departments that we had uh, fellows in. We uh, developed a program uh, more fully in the observation of Earth from space, the uh, remote sensing activities. We uh, certainly um, promoted and fostered the development and the uh, excellent program in the World Data Center for Snow and Ice. We've always opted for excellence and uh, clearly causes us to uh, rank uh, among the world's uh, best universities in terms of the environmental programs uh, that we offer. Ceres' goal is to conduct science and service to society. Around the turn of the century, Ceres began to develop key programs that communicate important research findings to the global scientific community, policymakers, and the general public. With the creation of the Center for Science and Technology Policy Research, the Western Water Assessment, and the Education Outreach Group, Ceres has provided decision makers and teachers with cutting edge scientific research to help ensure a sustainable environment now and for future generations. The importance of having a, a policy center tied with a uh, Earth System Science Institute such as Ceres is critical in a couple of things. First of all, in a world where politics plays out, you need a neutral ground where policy can be really um, uh, studied in a more fruitful way. And the interface of policy with science is, is really pretty critical in some of the decisions that, that we have to make as, as a nation. But also focuses on the ability for science to help inform decisions that a business may have to make, decisions that a local government may have to make, decisions on natural resource um, allocation and management, and hence uh, the Western Water Assessment Project um, basically was born to address sort of uh, the interface between decision makers in the water management world and the relevant science, whether it be the right forecast that I need or what is happening in this particular watershed that I need to protect or what's the um, evolution of uh, going out forward in terms of what the city of Boulder might need in terms of water infrastructure. And I, think the, I think the unique thing about the education outreach effort is that, first of all, it focused on teachers, because teachers are the multiplier uh, in reaching students. And it, it also really married sort of the scientist as the content person and the teacher as knowing the pedagogy in the development of curriculum. So that we weren't really solely developing curriculum, it was the teacher developing curriculum that we were, we were really the content advisors. And, um, I think that kind of relationship really, really works well and is an appropriate relationship for a science interface with um, education, particularly at the K-12 area. Series is as strong because the members all work together, not only the members in science, also the admin support, and Ceres is unique to be a research unit interdisciplinary between disciplines and that's the place I really want it to be. What really has changed in Ceres, I think, what I see that is new, 
people are working closer together because environmental research today is seen as a major issue. It has been important 20, 30 years ago, but our environment is changing and no longer can a geologist have the overview of all the changes. He has to work with a biologist. The biologist has to work with a chemist. The chemist works with a physicist. And I think that group involvement I have seen emerging out in the last 10 years. And that makes a big difference, I think, in the future. And that position seals also very well because it is flexible with its research. And I think this is also one of the secrets of Cirrus, why it is very prosperous and very innovative, because it can connect between the disciplines and you are in the same building, you have the coffee together, you have the seminars together, and that makes the interaction possible. Well, um, the question you raise is about uh, the future and about what the challenges are. The best we can do, I would argue, in series is keep doing the best we can do. Keep writing proposals, keep creating new ideas, keep inventing things, keep writing good authoritative papers unbiased by personal prejudice or advocacy. If we do this, then the public will have the greatest confidence that we can expect from them.